the Hulk has a brutal fight with Juggernaut and many, many different powerful mutants in X-Men. In this action-filled issue with non-stop battles, as he finally confronts Xavier because he was supposed to be on the Illuminati team that sent him off to War World, but he wasn't. So Hulk needs answers. My name is AJ, and if you enjoy any part of this video, drop a like or even a sub. But let's get into it. Now the story begins and picks up with the Hulk literally in the middle of a fight getting jumped by various mutants. And if you want a full backstory of how we got here, check the first links in the description or you can find the previous parts in full detail. But basically Hulk wants Xavier for answers. So he stormed the X-Men mansion. But as you can imagine, the mutants didn't take too kindly of this and now they're retaliating to try and stop him. But the Hulk is the strongest one there is, and they can't stop him. And so far, everything they've thrown at him has failed. But back to this immediate battle, we see Nightcrawler talking to Darwin. Now Darwin has a unique mutant ability. He is basically the ultimate life form, meaning he can evolve his power set to fit any situation. Which if you ask me, that's a pretty OP power and very versatile because his power sets literally evolve to drain and absorb gamma radiation, the thing that powers the Incredible Hulk, as he then reaches out his hands and immediately tries to drain him. But unfortunately, as he says, there's so much and no end to it. So even though he can evolve, his powers still have limits. And so with one simple thunderclap, he knocks him back before rushing up and punching him square in the chest. And you might say, okay, well, he can evolve. So what would he change his power set into now to defend against the Hulk? Well, it's simple. If you're fighting someone and you can't handle them, your best bet is to be somewhere else where they're not. So we see him literally just teleport away with Nightcrawler saying his body reached the same conclusion that the best defense against the Hulk is to be somewhere else, just showing how powerful Hulk is right now in this state. But as we then see one of the mutants try to hypnotize the Hulk, we see the Hulk actually has pretty good defenses against mind manipulation, as she is unsuccessful as were Emma Frost and Charles Xavier himself when trying to control the Hulk mentally. But he simply grabs another mutant, throwing him at her, taking her out of the fight, as the rest try and dogpile on him. With the Hulk not even being mad, annoyed is the better word to use, as he says, this is pathetic. I don't even know who most of you are. Which you know, for some of the mutants, I share the same sentiment. But two things of importance happens right here. The first one is a mutant introduces herself as Monette, and she claims she is virtually indestructible or invulnerable. And the next thing to note is another mutant that jumps behind him. And with him saying, all you need to know about me are that my knives are vibranium before literally stabbing Hulk in the shoulder. Which, if you recall from the previous issue, Wolverine even established that Hulk was getting harder to cut using his adamantium claws. But here, the vibranium claws stab through him like butter. So I mean, you can leave this up to your own interpretation on where the two metals fall on a power scale. As to my knowledge, I'm pretty sure adamantium is a tougher metal, but doesn't have the same properties like the kinetic energy buildup as vibranium. But that's all unimportant. But because of where he stabbed him in his shoulders, they're stopping him from raising his arms. But as Hulk points out, he still has his feet as he stomps on the ground, blowing everyone back. And while saying, my feet are all I need, he literally kicks Monette from New York to Jersey, saying, go be invulnerable somewhere else. And as for these, I don't care what they are made of, they are still useless to me. And so are you before literally popping the vibranium claws out of his shoulders and throwing them back at him. And the last mutant who was there trying to restrain Hulk is a bigger guy actually, who has a unique ability. He can absorb kinetic energy. So any attack the Hulk hits him with, he could send it right back to the Hulk. But unfortunately, his ability does have limits, as he even hurts himself more than he has hurt the Hulk. And if he absorbs too much energy, specifically the Hulk's, it will damage his heart and kill him. Which now thinking about it, it would be a pretty powerful counter if there was a person or some entity with the ability to absorb kinetic energy on a super high level while also absorbing absorbing gamma radiation and other things like that. It would almost be a perfect counter to Hulk as whatever Hulk dishes out would be sent right back at him while draining his gamma radiation. But knowing the Hulk and how powerful he is, he will probably overcome that too. Moving back after the Hulk has taken out those mutants, we see Emma Frost and Nightcrawler coming up with a plan. And with Nightcrawler jumping on the Hulk's back to try and teleport him, he is only able to get him a short distance away as there is a mass limit to how much he can teleport and how far. But he got him just far enough to 
set their plan into action. As you then see above the jet they flew on plummeting straight for them, crashing right into Hulk, engulfing him into an explosion. And while all the other mutants on the sideline got to safety, they sit there and hope that this would take the Hulk out or at least slow him down, but unfortunately, it literally does nothing. As we see Hulk walking through the flames with a piece of the wreckage, throwing it at them, seemingly hitting them and taking them out of the fight just like that. But moving over, we see the juggernaut on the floor, beaten and bruised from the battle he just had with the Hulk, which Hulk humiliated him. And because of this, he talks to Sidorak, the being who empowers the juggernaut, saying, why send me here without full power? And with Sidorak, who goes on to explain, I'm not restricting your powers, it's you. You were in denial of who you are, an avatar of my destruction. And if you want real power, you have to begin to accept it. Fully embrace it with no turning back. And with Juggernaut desperate to stop the Hulk, as Charles Xavier is his stepbrother and he obviously doesn't want any harm to come to him, he has no choice but to agree. But speaking of Charles Xavier, we cut back over to him while he is over there with the hurt mutants trying to help and get them back on their feet. But unfortunately, the Hulk has caught up and is now there. And with Wolverine there too after his beating in the previous issue and video, his brain is not fully healed yet. And just like that, Hulk backhands him away, taking him out of the fight once again. And with no one there currently to even slow him down or try to stop him, it seems Hulk would have his way with Xavier. But just then, someone speaks up behind him saying, you have unfinished business, Hulk, and it is none other the Juggernaut at full power in his iconic armor. And with that, they come to blows. Two powerhouses of the Marvel Universe fighting at full force. In the contrast from the earlier issue where Hulk put the beat down on Juggernaut, the Juggernaut starts pitting the beat down on Hulk, smashing his face into the ground. But Hulk, being the strongest one there is, won't go down without a fight, as they are seemingly evenly matched as they trade blows, literally threaten to shatter and break the very foundation that the mansion is on, as they fight to a standstill. And as they are in this standstill, Juggernaut is the first to speak up, saying we've done this dance before Hulk and I won. But of course the Hulk, never being one to back down from a fight, he continues on. But just then Xavier runs out, saying stop, you're undermining the very foundation of the mansion itself. You will bring it entirely down. And with the Hulk seeing enough is enough, he decides to put an end to this fight, saying nothing stops a juggernaut, right? Fine, then just keep going. As he literally redirects him, sending him running off, smashing through concrete walls and not stopping, removing him from the battlefield and I guess winning the fight, even though they are both still up. And as he finally gets Xavier alone, he tells him it's over. But before he can get to him, another mutant jumps on him trying to defend Xavier, Mercury, and her mutant power transformed her entire body into a living liquid metal, allowing her to change her shape and transform. And as she tries to wrap around the Hulk, he effortlessly tears her off and throws her through the window, saying nothing stops me until he suffers as much as I have, referring to Xavier. As Xavier goes to run after Mercury and his Hulk finally follows him through, they seem to have landed in front of the X-Men gravesite, marking the deaths and bodies of various students and or mutants that attended the mansion. And with Mercury now crying, saying you wanted to talk about suffering? Well look around you. As she goes on to further explain how Hulk is blinded and raged because of the things he lost, he hasn't stopped to think about what they have lost collectively, and especially Xavier, as she gives a couple examples. One being Lori Collins. All she wanted was for people to like her, but she was murdered and shot in the head when she was 16. Or Brian Cruz. He loved his mutant abilities and being here at the mansion, but he lost it all on M-Day. He lost his life too, along with 41 other kids, because some mutant hater blew them up like your wife was blown up. And with her now blowing up on Hulk, yelling at him, don't tell me we haven't suffered like you. You're trying to do to us exactly what your enemies did to you. Destroy what happiness you've managed to find in a world that hates you. Comparing the mutant injustice and prejudice to kind of what the Hulk faces as being a big green Goliath or monster in the eyes of the public, and especially for something the professor didn't even do. Now regardless, even if his intention would be to send them away, he wasn't there, nor was he aware of what they were planning. And one of the first times during this entire battle stops to think logically for a second thinking about his actions and what he is doing, until he finally speaks up, saying you really consider this all your fault Xavier, and my guess is, you should, you're already living in hell. AKA basically saying, Xavier just by existing in what he is in the world is already suffering enough, just as Hulk has, before jumping away, ending this entire confrontation with 
the X-Men. Now, as we finally covered the last issue in the story of how Hulk went against the X-Men, what do you guys think about it? Now, of course, in the end, he didn't really get his revenge on Charles as he decided Charles already suffered enough and will continue to suffer. The Hulk still got his point across. And of course, if you know anything about the World Breaker Hulk storyline, he does plenty more damage to many other heroes. But with that, that's the end of this video. Of course, if you enjoyed, leave a like or even subscribe and even check out the videos on screen now as you enjoy them just as much as you did this one. Thank you.